Okay, let me uh, go ahead and talk about how um, we solve this business rule issue. And um, I want to say we because actually um, I took these ideas from uh, Scott Guthrie, Microsoft's famous uh, Scott GU. Um, so uh, I'm just passing on uh, his proposed way of solving the problem. So what I've created is a new class called Rule Violation. You can see it right here. It has um, three properties, an error message, uh, the name of the property that uh, the error was detected on, and the value. And it has a new uh, constructor. And that new constructor requires me to pass these three values in. So there's uh, a way to get the uh, error message property name and property value in. Um, there is another uh, creation, an, an interface. It's called iRuleEntity. And um, it uh, has um, something defined called get rule violation, which uh, returns a list of rule violation. So it returns a list of these things, um, zero or more of these things. Remember, this is an interface, which means that if something implements an interface, it must include the details. Whereas in the definition of the interface, unlike the class, we don't supply the actual details um, of this particular behavior or method. Um, we have one more definition, which is called a rule violation exception. It inherits from the exception class. Um, it has uh, two fields and no properties. Um, the fields are a description and an issue. And the issue is actually another list of rule violations. Uh, this exception is created with a constructor that requires us to pass the description of the uh, set of errors and the set of errors themselves. And when I say set of errors, I mean the list of rule violations. Um, now, uh, let's move on here. Here is the um, uh, create um, action that's inside the uh, product controller. Um, this is like the create action you saw uh, in the prior tutorial. Um, this is the one that responds to the post. So after the user has filled out the new data and clicks the submit button, this is the action method that is executed. You can remember we, um, we had a binding to the product to create and we excluded the ID field from that binding. Um, and um, we have this statement here, which just checks for problems such as um, uh, data type mismatches. And then we get down to the try block. And um, we have some stuff going on here. Um, I, I add the product, the product to create. That assumes there's no data type mismatches. And I submit the changes. Now, um, when, um, when you submit changes, something happens. And that something happens is that um, I have created a new partial class called product. Notice this class implements iRuleEntity, which mes means it must provide uh, the details for get rule violation, which I will show you in a moment. But um, uh, when the uh, changes are submitted, um, and I'm link using link to SQL, um, there is an automatic call to the onValid uh, on validate routine, which I have provided some details here. And what I do is I an uh, immediately call the get rule violation procedure up here, um, which then goes through and checks to see if there's a problem. And if it returns, remember this thing returns a list of uh, rule violations. Um, if that list count is greater than zero, then I throw a rule violation exception. So here we're actually seeing everything that we had invo involved in that prior definition. Um, so here's the, the get rule violation procedure inside my uh, uh, products uh, partial class. Notice it implements um, I rule entity uh, get rule violation. That is, it implements this interface. Um, and. Um, uh, so it must uh, it must do that because of its the fact that it implemented it, um, and um, I create something called validation issues as a new list of rule violations. Um, 
Let's move a little ahead here. Uh, what I do is I go ahead and I check the unit price. If the unit price is less than one, then I go to my list validation issues, my list of uh, rule violations, and add uh, a new rule violation. Now remember, rule violations have an error message, in this case unit price, a property name, um, which is um, a unit uh, which is which is called unit price and um, the property value here is it says uh, unit price is too low so um, I, I basically make that comparison and I add perhaps this rule violation maybe this rule violation that is reorder at level less than zero and maybe this rule violation an uh, interaction between the discontinued property and the reorder level when um, when these three if statements are done, I return uh, the validation issues. That is, I return, uh, and you can see here, it returns a list of uh, rule violations. So it returns that list of rule violations. This returned list of, uh, of validation errors or rule violations is then checked to see if there are more than one, uh, at is more than zero, uh, one or more. And if that is the case, I, I throw a new rule violation exception. Now remember, a rule violation exception, defined here as this class, includes a description. This is my description. And an issue, remember the issue is a list of rule violations. And that, in this case, uh, is this uh, collection called issues, which received the uh, collection of rule violations that came back from the get rule violation procedure. I hope you're following me on this. I tried real hard to make this thing.